Let's do four examples of solving quadratic equations. We'll start off easy and work our way up. If I have x plus 3 times x minus 5 equals 0. Don't multiply those together. I don't want that because at this stage I have a multiplication problem. You heard the word times in there. x plus 3 times x minus 5 equals 0. That's exactly where I want to be because the only way these two can multiply to get 0 is either x plus 3 had to be 0 or x minus 5 has to be 0. Once I get here, I need to keep going until I have x equals. I don't care what x plus 3 equals. I want to know what x is. So I'll subtract 3 from both sides. So an x value of negative 3 makes the equation true. Doing the same process on that second factor gives me that x equals 5 as a solution. If the instructions, this is true for all math, if the instructions are solve, you are not done until you have x equals a number. So don't stop until you get there. If the instructions are factor, then your answer is still going to have lots of x's and parentheses and everything in it. But if it's solve, keep on going until you get x equals. So here was our first example. Let's do another one. If I had x squared minus 5x equals negative 6. Now we are using the zero factor property. Zero factor property. That means I need a zero. I don't have a zero yet. So I need to move this negative 6 so that I can get a 0 on the right side. So add that 6 to both sides. Then factor. So be careful. This one factors, it looks like it factors a bunch of different ways. There's only one correct one, so let's look. Leading coefficients 1, trinomial, pair of factors of 6, it's positive, so we want to add to give the 5. So that would be the 2 and the 3. 2 and 3, multiply to 6, add to 5. Since the 5 is negative and the 6 is positive, that means both signs inside my parentheses are negative. Because the two negatives multiplying give me that positive 6, but when I do the outer inner, negative minus another negative keeps me a negative there. So now I have the two binomials multiplying to give 0, so either x minus 3 is 0, or x minus 2 is 0, x equals 3, or x equals 2 for the solutions. Example 3. 2x squared plus 13x plus 15 equals 0. Don't forget all of the factoring that you've already learned how to do. We still have to do that. Trinomial. Leading coefficient is not 1, so that means I'm going to do the AC method. A is the leading coefficient, C is the name we give to our constant term. 2 times 15 is 30, 15 is positive, so I need to multiply to 30, add to give 13. So that's the 10 and the 3. So 2x squared plus 10x plus 3x plus 15. In case you're wondering, say, gosh, and I really wanted to do plus 3x plus 10x. Will it still work? It sure will. Go ahead and try it. You won't take out the same thing inside the brackets, but at the end, your answer should be the same. So I have 2x squared plus 10. Greatest common factor in that bin is a 2x. He's behind an x and a plus 5. In the second bin, the greatest common factor is 3. Take out a plus 3 leaves behind an x plus 5. Now I have that same x plus 5 in both sides. Take it out. Leaves behind a 2x plus a 3 equals 0. So either x plus 5 equals 0 or 2x plus 3 equals 0. That first one leads, leads me to a solution of x equals negative 5. And the second one, subtract 3 from both sides. Divide both sides by 2. 
two solutions. Two solutions is going to be what happens most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. And again, if you want to check, you could take the negative 5, plug it back up here in the top where you had your x's, and see that everything cancels out. So I said four examples. Here's our last one. I picked it because it's especially tricky. So x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals negative 2. And the reason why this is tricky is when you first look at it, that left-hand side factors. You're thinking, excellent, it factors, I don't have to work too hard. But if you factor it, you're going to have the set of parentheses multiplying that equals negative 2. That doesn't help me at all. I need it to multiply to equal 0. So my first step right, has to equal 0. So I need to add that 2 to both sides to get a 0 on the right. So go ahead and bring the 2 in. It's going to add with that 4 to get me a plus 6. And this is just like the one that we did before. Multiply to 6, add to give 5, except this time that 5 is positive as well. So x plus 3 times x plus 2 equals 0. So either x plus 3 is 0 or x plus 2 is 0. x equals negative 3 or x equals negative 2. Notice I didn't ever stop until I got to x equals.